We're going to be talking about writing equations from a table. So people get all scared about this, but really, if you think about it, in the activity did above, we did above, we have two points, like two, four, and five, I don't know, eight. Well, isn't that a table? I mean, yeah, there's only two points on the table, but isn't that a table? So you actually really already know how to write an equation from a table, but we're just going to show you some tables and see what we're talking about. The only problem with writing an equation from a table is you can't just pick the first two points and go. You need to make verify that all the points create a line because you might graph something and you start off, oh, the first two points are a line, but then the next one's here or there. And what does that mean? It's doing that. So the only thing about writing an equation from a table is that I first have to make sure that the rate of change or the slope is constant, which means it's linear. So that, the way we do that is we say, okay, change in y and the change in x. And I say, okay, from 18 to 30 is a plus 12. From 30 to 36 is a plus 6. And from 36 to 48 is a plus uh, 12 again? Plus 12. So these aren't the same, but that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at that ratio. So we'll look on the other side here. From 35 is plus 2. From 5 to 6 is plus 1, and from 6 to 8 is a plus 2. Right? Well, they're not the same either. Well, that's okay, because remember, my slope, also known as my rate of change, is the change in y over the change in x, which means I'm looking at these ratios right here. These are the ratios that I'm looking at between the changes in the y and the changes in the x. So the change in y over the change in x, so I have 12 over 2. 6 over 1, and 12 over 2. I say, well, are these the same? Well, we always see we can simplify. Well, 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 divided by 1 is 6. 12 divided by 2 is 6. These rates of changes are all the same. So guess what? I know that this is linear, so I can continue now. So I have the slope. I know the slope is 6. Now I have to pick a point. People say, well, which point should I pick? Well, I recommend you pick the easiest point there. And so I look at those, they, they all look pretty hard, but I, I like multiplying by 5, so those are easy. And 30 is a lot easier than multiplying by, you know, other numbers, because this is a, basically a 3 with a 0 at the end of it. So I'm going to pick that as my point. So my point I'm picking is 5, 30. Because once I figure out that this is linear, any point in the line should be able to help me. So now I'm going to label this. This is my x1 and my y1. And now I need to go to point-slope form. And point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I'm going to substitute my values in. So I have y minus, I look at my y1 is 30, equals m, which I already found out was 6 because it's continuous, x minus my x1, which is 5. And now that's point slope form. If that's all I needed, I'd be done. But if I need to put in slope intercept form, that means I need to simplify. So I'm going to go 6 times 5 is, I mean 6 times x, pardon, is 6x, and 6 times negative 5 is negative 30, and then I get y minus 30 equals 6x minus 30, but I'm not done because y is not alone, so I need to simplify this or solve for y, so I need to get y alone by adding 30. If I add 30 to one side, if I add 30 to the other, I add those together because those are like terms, so I get y equals 6x, and negative 30 plus 30 is 0, do I need to write that zero down? Oh, you look kind of silly doing that. So my equation ends up being y equals 6x. Done. So again, make sure the line is linear. Once you find a constant rate of change, then you can pick a point, any point, put it in point-slope form, simplify. You do the next one. I'm assuming you paused and you went through this. First thing I'm going to do is to make sure my rate of change is constant. Because if it's not linear, then I can't use a linear equation to find the answer to it. Uh, so I go 24 to 12 is a minus 12. 12 to 6 is a minus 6. 6 to 0 is a minus 6. Okay. I go over here and say 8 to negative 4 is a plus 4. Negative 4 to 2, and negative 2 is a plus 2. And negative 2 to 0 is a plus 2. And again, I'm not looking at this row or that row. I want to look at the ratio between the change in the y and the change 
in the x, because that's how we find slope, to see if it's a constant rate of change. So I look and say, okay, the rate of change there is negative 12 over 4. The rate of change here is 6 over 2. Negative 6 over 2, excuse me. And the last one is negative 6 over 2. And again, before I see if these are equal or not, I have to simplify them. Let's check. Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. This is a constant rate of change because all the rates of change are the same. So this is linear, and I know my slope is negative 3. Now I've got to pick a point. So you can pick any point, but why not pick the easiest point? The easiest point I can see is right here. 0, 0. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. So I'm going to pick the point 0, comma 0 as my point. That's my x1 and my y1. Now I've got to put it into my equation. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. You can see why it's important to memorize this formula, because if you don't know it, you don't know how to do it. And so I'm going to see if I can now substitute my values in. So I'm going to have y minus my y1, which is 0, I'll put a 0 in here, equals m, which you already figured out is negative 3, times x uh, minus, look at my x1 is 0. It's not, this is point slope form, if that's all I need to do, I'd be done, but if I need to put it in slope intercept form, I'm going to simplify by distributing. I get negative 3x, negative 3 times negative 0 is just 0. And so I get y minus 0 equals negative 3x plus 0. And then when I look at that, I say, okay, I don't need the minus 0, and I don't need the plus 0 because they're just 0. So I'm just going to have y equals negative 3x, and I'm done. Boom. Nice. You try the next one. I'm assuming that you paused and you did it. Remember, you're not passively watching. You're actively taking notes, and you are trying the problem so that when you go to do the activity, you have a confidence that you wouldn't have had unless you've actually done the lessons. All right, so the change in y and the change in x is what I'm looking for. So 5 to 7 is plus 2. 7 to 9 is plus 2. 9 to 11 is plus 2. That all looks nice. 1 to 2 is plus 1. 2 to 3 is plus 1. 3 to 4 is plus 1. This seems pretty straightforward, and I can already tell that my rate of change for each one is the same because they're all 2 over 1, 2 over 1, and 2 over 1, which simplifies to 2, so my slope is 2. Now I need to pick a point, and I say, which point looks easiest? They all look pretty bad, but I think 1 comma 5 is my easiest option there, so I'm going to pick the point 1 comma 5 as my x1, y1. Again, that's just because I'm calling it that first point. Now I go to my formula, the point-slope formula, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And now I have to substitute my values in. So I'm going to go y minus, my y1 is 5, so I'll put in a 5, equals m. My m is a 2, so I'm going to substitute in 2. x minus my x1, which is 1. If I need to put it in point-slope form, I'm done. But if I need to do it in slope-intercept form, I need to simplify. To simplify, I need to distribute. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then I have y minus 5. Almost done, but I need to get y alone, so I get rid of the constant. Plus 5. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other. This is 0. I get y equals 2x plus 3. Think about that. You took a table, and you were able to write a um, equation that represents the graph that this would form. Go ahead and try the next one. All right, I don't know why that has a timer on it. So, change in y, change in x. Again, I'm just going to do by changing, which is going to be from 5 to negative 4 is plus 1, from negative 4 to 3 is plus 1, from 3 to negative 2 is plus 1. On this side, from negative 6 to negative 2 is plus 2 plus 2, plus 2. This is the same problem as last time. Did I just do it twice? Huh. Well, we'll just do it really quick. We can always edit it out if it's uh, repeat. So I get 2 over 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1. Those all equal to 2. So I have a constant rate of change. My slope is 2. Pick a point. 
The easiest point I can see on here is 0, negative 2. So I'll pick the point 0, negative 2. And now I can go, okay, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. If you notice that this is actually the, the y-intercept, then you'd actually know what the answer is already. But if you don't see that, just follow along. y minus y1, which is x1, y1, which is minus a minus 2 equals m, which is 2, times x minus 0. That's point slope form. Well, it needs to be simplified some, right? I could probably turn this negative 2 into a positive 2 because minus and minus is a positive. And I distribute through. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 0 is plus 0 equals y plus 2. I don't really need the 0, but I'll use that in a second. I have to get rid of the constant, minus 2, minus 2. I get y equals 2x minus 2. And like I said before, if you notice that this was the y-intercept, the y-intercept is negative 2, guess what? We already had the answer set up for us. So there you have it. Go ahead and do this one. All right. So again, start off by trying to find the change and to see if it's a, uh, any table I find, I want to make sure to see if it's linear. To see if it's linear, I need to make sure I have a constant rate of change. So I check, I say plus 0, plus 0, plus 0. Or well, here I have minus 2, minus 2, minus 1. Oh, well, that doesn't look the same. But remember, it's the... I put two change. Hey, people at home, don't do that. It's a change in x and the change in y. So now I want to find my slope, which is the change in y over the change in x. And some people might say they look different, but remember, I have 0 over negative 2, I have 0 over negative 2, and I have 0 over negative 1, but 0 on top, anything divided, 0 divided by anything is just 0. So all of these are 0. Now, if you've been paying attention, you know that if my slope is 0, I have a special case. Hopefully you've done that. That would be your hoi horizontal zero slope, then you have a y equals, and you say, well, what is y equal? Oh, all the y's are four, so I know my answer is y equals four. But if you didn't see that, then you can just do a y minus y1 equals m times uh, x minus x1, and I still have not picked my point. What's the easiest point? Oh, right there, zero, four. That's my easiest point. So I'll pick the point zero comma four, I'll go x1, y1, and substitute them in. y minus y1 is 4 equals m, which we just said was 0, times x minus x1, which is 0. And if I simplify this, 0 times x is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, which is going to give me 0. And I have to dot y alone, so I'm going to add 4, add 4. I get y equals 4. And again, had you seen this from the get-go, you would have seen, oh, it was. But if you have to work it out, that's fine too. All right, you try it. All right, I'm assuming that you already did. Again, you're not being passive, you're being active. My change in y and my change in x, because I want to make sure I have a constant rate of change. That's how we tell if something's linear. So from 5 to 10, I go plus 5. From 10 to 15, I go plus 5. From 15 to 20, I go plus 5. From negative 2 to negative 2 is plus 0, plus 0, plus 0. These are both the same, so I already know that it's going to be constant. But what is my slope? I go change in y over the change in x. That's what my slope equals. And I get 5 over 0, 5 over 0, 5 over 0, which are all the same. But then we ask our question, what is that slope? It's not zero because you can't have zero in the denominator. That would be undefined. So we call those no slopes. What does no slope look like? We have positive, negative, no slope, zero. And no slope is straight up and down. And no slope is what we call our special cases. So my slope equals that there is no slope. So I can't put a slope in. So I can't use point slope form because I can't plug in no slope. I just have to know my special case. There's two of them, hoi or vux. And if you're confused, write about them, hoi or vux. Well, hoi is a zero slope. I don't have a zero slope. Vux is undefined, means no slope, so I must be having a vux. Vux is a vertical line, undefined slope, 
it's going to be x equals. And then I just go to my table and say, well, here's my x's. What do they equal? They all equal negative 2, so guess what? That is the equation of my line. All right, I think that should be enough for you to be able to do the activity below. Good luck. It's pretty amazing you're able to write an equation from a table.